To all my fellow brothers and sisters, peace be with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a nomad of Deseret, and today we are continuing our Light of the Restoration series where we discuss the claims made by Joseph Smith in comparison to the writings of the early Christian churches. Uh, but first, before we get into that, uh, if you are on YouTube, uh, I am getting reports from subscribers that uh, YouTube is, ha has been hiding some of my videos. And if you want to receive all my videos as a subscriber, uh, you need to click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll tell YouTube that you want to receive all my videos, not just the videos that YouTube thinks that you want. Or you can join me on BitChute, which doesn't uh, censor my videos. Uh, also, I have a new announcement. I have moved to a a new video platform site called HugeTube. That is U G E Tube dot com, and I'm going to be building that up. It's it's, it's just a repeat. I've decided that I want to move to as many video platforms as possible. And so f all the free sites that I can go to, I will try to go to and uh, post all these videos uh, that I get on my regular channels. And so uh, you can, if if you don't like uh, YouTube or BitChute, you can also go to YouTube now and start getting my videos. I have a lot of catching up to do on on a huge tube so new videos won't be there yet because I'm right now I'm, I'm, I'm putting out all the, the older stuff that I want to put on there um, now with that out of the way let's go ahead and get started this is video number eight of the endowment series and today we're going to talk about the robes of the priesthood and uh, this is a continuation well, uh, my Light of the Restoration series is, is actually designed to be watched in order, but you can watch things individually and just learn about that topic. But uh, for this one, this is sort of a, a continuation of when we talked about the, the garments of the Holy Priesthood. And so, uh, if, you, you might, if you have not seen that video first, you might want to watch that video first. Um, or watch it afterwards. That way, things might make a little bit more sense. Uh, at the at the end of of uh, reading what I would read today, I also have some pictures that I have been looking for. I finally found them this morning, and I want to show you them at the end of this of this video um, that go along with this topic. Uh, but uh, today, what we're going to talk about is the robes of the priesthood. And uh, before they made the changes to the endowment ceremony, uh, originally uh, there was basically two types of robes um, put on during the endowment, and this is what Joseph Smith was uh, is uh, telling us. And that um, on on one shoulder, well, it, it's it's one robe, but if it's on one shoulder. It's a. Uh, it's called the the robe of the Aaronic priesthood, and if it's on the other shoulder, then it's the robe of the Melchizedek priesthood. Um, the recent change in the ordinance has made it so that now we just put the robe on one shoulder and keep it there f uh, throughout the entire thing, instead of changing it over as we we go through the uh, the uh, endowment. So um, the, the question is, do we have some type of, of, of practice of, a, of, of robes of, of the priesthood uh, in early Christianity? Well, uh, first, let's look at a book called The Testament of Levi, which was widely used in the early Christian church. And it was originally a Jewish writing, but the, um, the 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 Christian Church embraced it 
as well. Um, and it says in chapter 8, starting in verse 2, it says, and I saw seven men in white clothing who were saying to me, Arise, put on the vestments or garments of the priesthood, the crown of righteousness, the oracle of understanding, the rib of truth, the breastplate of faith, the miter for the head, and the apron for prophetic power. So, um, here we're just going to focus on, it says the robe of truth. And so this is, um, and it, and it would be the equivalent of the, the robe of the priesthood in the, in the endowment. And, um, these are, these are special clothing, uh, in this list here, this is the special clothing worn by priests. The, this is before, this is supposedly before the time of, of Moses because this is a uh, Levi and this is Levi being made a, a priest. And, um, there's, there's seven, um, men with him and, uh, in, in white clothing. And uh, they they tell him to put on the vestments or garment of the of the priesthood of uh, the crown of righteousness, the oracle of understanding. Uh, that's probably in reference to the Urim and Thummim. Uh, the robe of truth uh, is is the robe worn. Uh, uh, the breastplate of faith. The, the 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 breastplate is probably referring to. Uh, the 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 instrument that held the Urim and Thummim. Um, the miter for the head that is referring to a cap worn. And the apron for prophetic power. And uh, that is referring to the the apron worn. Um, during. Uh, uh, their, their 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 ceremony. Um, I didn't think of this before, but I guess we should talk about the, the fact that there's an apron. Now, this is this is the only place you're going to see anything talked about about it, an apron. So, I guess there's really no point in, in making a, a separate video. So I'll just I'll just talk about this now. Um, another claim of Joseph Smith was the the wearing of an apron, and um, this is done in remembrance of the of the fig leaves that. Uh, Adam and Eve uh, uh, sewed together to make themselves a covering when they realized that they were naked. And so here we see the, uh, the, the, the basics that are similar to the, the endowment is the, the vestments or garments of the priesthood, uh, the robe of truth, which we call the robe of, of, of the priesthood, and then um, the apron for prophetic power. Now uh, we don't we don't consider it as having prophetic power in the in the endowment. It's a remembrance of of uh, the covering that uh, worn by Adam and Eve to cover their nakedness. But but there we see uh, some similarities in that regard. Uh, next is a book called the Trimorphic Protenoia. Um, Trimorphic Protenoia means basically the three-form divine first thought. And um, in its form, it is a Barbalite treatise which has undergone both Sethian and Christian revisions. Um, and so this was originally used for one thing, but then, um, some, some Sethian and, 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 uh, and Gnostic Christians, um, got a hold of it and, and, and started revising it. 
in order to fit their their world view. And so, uh, uh, what we have here is the the Sethian and Gnostic revision that was made, and it says in here. And I am inviting you into the exalted perfect light. Moreover, as for this light, when you enter it, you will be glorified by those who give glory, and those who enthrone will enthrone you. You will accept robes from those who give robes, and the Baptists will baptize you. You will become gloriously glorious, the way you first were when you were light. And so in, in here we see the concept of the giving of a robe as part of a an ordinance. Whenever uh, a, a lot of translators use the, the term baptismal, and it might not it, it, it might be referring to baptism because we have to remember that the, the Gnostics corrupted a whole bunch of, 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 of stuff. And so they started doing things out of order and altering the way that it was originally done. Uh, uh, before the apostasy occurred, but um, the, the term baptismal uh, is could be a reference to to ordinances in general. And remember that uh, in the ear early church, the term mystery was was uh, in regards actually to the ordinances, and so. Uh, we, we see these robes being given uh, by those who give robes and um, those who are are bap the, the ones responsible for baptizing baptize uh, the people and in this way they are able to uh, return to the state that they were originally which is a state of light which is in reference to before um, uh, they came to this earth. They were they were with the light, and then through undergoing these ordinances, um, you are able to return to the light. Uh, later on in the same uh, text, it, it has a a little uh, similar saying. It says, "I delivered him to those who give robes." Yamon, Elaso, Amenai, and they covered him with a robe from the robes of the light, and delivered him to the Baptists, and they baptized him. And so, in here, these robes are referred to uh, robes of the light. And uh, in, in here, well, in, in both the one we previously read and in this one we just read, it refers, it refers to robes of light being in the plural sense meaning that there's Im implied more than one. Now, we in the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints would see uh, at least those who undergo the, undergo the, uh, the older endowment before the, the change over to one, to, to one robe would see these robes in the plural form as being referring to uh, those two robes that were originally in the endowment. Uh, next, we turn to the Pistis Sophia again, which discusses a lot about this uh, topic. Um, the first thing we'll read, it says, Come unto us, for we all draw nigh to thee, to clothe thee with the first mystery, and all his glory by commandment of himself, in that the first mystery hath given us it, consisting of two vestures, uh, to clothe thee therewith, besides the one which we have sent thee, for thou art worthy of them, since thou art prior to us and existest before us. For this cause, therefore, hath the first mystery sent thee through us the mystery of all his glory, consisting of two vestures. Now, I do not like this translation. I could not find another translation, but... Uh, it uses the term vestures. 
Now, in, in the way of translation, the term vesture can mean uh, clothing in general. Um, it can also mean robe or garment. Uh, I believe that it should be translate. It would be better translated as as robes. The reason why the translator is translating as as vestment vestures is because they're trying to make it sound more metaphorical uh, when they should be making it sound literal. Because this is describing Jesus Christ uh, receiving the robes that he needs in order to. Uh, ascend through the gates to get back into the presence of God. And uh, when we talked about, we talked uh, more about that in the previous video about uh, signs, uh, uh, see, secret signs, tokens, keywords, and uh, and gates. And so, it, if uh, you're new to this channel. Uh, and want to know more about that, please watch the, the previous uh, Light of the Restoration video. And, um, oh, I, sh I guess I should have said this at the beginning, but um, on, on, on all my channels now, there is, there is a, a playlist specifically for Light of the Restoration. And so if you're on YouTube, BitChute, and now YouTube, you can get a uh, you can find the playlist in in my playlist section of all the Light of the Restoration videos that I have made uh, so far. Now uh, back to uh, this passage. Uh, again we see this concept of multiple uh, vestures or robes and here specifically they say there's two robes. Um, in, in, the, in the next passage, it talks more about uh, this. Um, in the, the Pistis Sophia, uh, they, uh, Jesus talks about three, three vestures or garments, basically. Um, and they, 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 they talk about it in reverse order. And so... Uh, there, there's these two vestures, and we've already talked about the third vesture, which contains the marks and the, the words needed in order to, to return into the presence of God. We talked about all that, all that in the video uh, about the, the holy garment of the, of the priesthood. And so if you want to know more about that one, you can go back to that video. But uh, in here, we're, we're just going to talk about these two vestures or robes. Um, it, in, in describing the, the, the first vesture, it says, In the first is the whole glory of all the names of all mysteries and all emanations of the orders of the spaces of the ineffable. And so... Uh, this first uh, vesture, or I believe better translated as robe, it says that uh, it contains the whole glory of all the names of all mysteries and all emanations of the orders of the spaces of the ineffable. Um, this, I believe, is referring to the, the, the robe that we associate with the Melchizedek priesthood, which is given the... Uh, w w which the Melchizedek priesthood has the the, uh, uh, the the power to 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 give all mysteries um, or ordinances of the gospel and uh, and while uh, the second robe, which is the the robe of the Aaronic priesthood, uh, it only has the 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 Aaronic priesthood only has uh, the ability to perform part of the ordinances that are required, and of the of the second uh, vesture or robe it says, and in the second vesture or robe is the whole glory of the name of all mysteries, 
and all emanations which are in the orders of the two spaces of the first mystery. And I know this is is a little uh, confusing because the Gnostic Christians like to make things confusing so that it becomes a mystery. But uh, there, there's a little bit of difference. This is only referring... Uh, it says... Uh, the whole, the whole glory of the name of all mysteries and all emanations which are in the orders of the two spaces of the first mystery. Now the way I interpret this is that this is this is talking about the the giving of the of the the when it talks about these two these two spaces um, this is referring to the the four uh, signs and tokens and keywords and the places where they are given to you. In the old days, um, they used to do these things in different rooms, whereas now they just have us watch a, a, a video. And um, the 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 first two uh, tokens and. Um, signs and keywords are associated with the Aaronic priesthood, while the last two are associated with the Melchizedek priesthood. And so that's why I say that this second robe or vesture, as, it tra as they translate it, is referring to the Aaronic priesthood, which only has the capacity to to bring you into the 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 first two. Of, of of those things in the in, in that ordinance uh, another similar uh, s statement in the uh, the Pista Sophia says uh, for we draw nigh unto thee to clothe thee by command of the first mystery with thy two vestures or robes other which existed for thee from the beginning with the first mystery until the time appointed by the ineffable is completed. And so this, this is this is Jesus talking about his experience where he received these robes. And what it is saying is that the reason he was given these robes here is because he had it uh, in the beginning with God. And so that that is is um, just showing that 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 Christ had the the glory uh, before, but Jesus Christ received it here to show us the way that we can return to God and reclaim our former thought, and and that is the the thought of the the Gnostic Christians, which is actually uh, similar to our belief in that we believe that. Uh, we existed with God in the beginning that we came down here and through Jesus Christ we were able to return into the, the presence of the the Father. And so that's all the stuff that I'm going to read. Now I have a couple uh, pictures that I want to show you and so I'm going to put that up screen right now. So these pictures that I'm showing you right now and that I'm going to show you, I'm going to scroll through these so that you can see them as I talk about them. And um, these pictures are, uh, are Catholic in origin. And they are mosaics that have been put in several of the, of the cathedrals. This first one that you're seeing right now is from Rome, Italy, and I don't know exactly where it is, but, uh, or, and I don't know how old it is, but it is continuing an ancient tradition that those with the priesthood wore these special robes that had these marks on them. And the robe is wrapped around the body. It's not worn like a tunic. In this first picture that you are currently seeing, this is a mosaic 
of Lot and Abraham when Lot and Abraham went their separate ways. And I have placed a red circle around each of these marks so that you can definitely be know, know where these marks are. Although I do think it's easy to see, I just wanted you to be able to focus in on those marks. And notice that the robe is wrapped around the body and contains uh, this mark. Now this mosaic is of Catholic origin again. I don't know what city it is in this time. I, and again, I don't know how old it is. But again, it's continuing the old tradition about the clothing that Jesus and the apostles wore. Uh, Jesus is in the middle wearing a purple robe. Purple represents kingship in um, the, the old days. And so that's probably why they have him depicted wearing a purple robe. And again, I have circled in red all these marks. And Jesus is wearing the same mark. And to uh, the right of, of Jesus is Judas kissing him. And behind Judas is the servants of the high priest come to take him. And behind Jesus is the apostles wearing white robes and they contained the same mark on them as uh, Jesus is wearing those. Some of them are in different directions. Uh, Peter is the one obviously holding the sword getting ready to cut off the servants here. Now this next mosaic Again, I don't know where it's located or the age of it, but it is Catholic of origin and is showing the tradition of what Jesus and his apostles wore. Now, again, Jesus is wearing a purple robe in this mosaic, and I have circled all the, the marks that are relevant. And... This is uh, Jesus when he is performing the miracle of, of the loaves and fishes. And to his left and right are the apostles. One apostle is blocked, but the three apostles are shown holding out their robes containing the same sacred marks. And I have circled those in red to make them easy to find. Now this next mosaic, I do know where it is, and it is in the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, and it is located in Rome, I believe. Uh, I didn't bother to look up uh, how old this basilica is, but it is in Rome, and it is of Catholic origin. Now unlike the other previous two. These are not apostles. These are angels because you can see the wings. And they have marks on their robes as well that they are wearing. And um, two of the marks are similar to the others while three of them are different. I don't know the reason for that. So those are all the pictures that I decided to show you uh, today. I have one more that I do want to show but I will do it in another video that is related to that topic. Uh, and the other pictures that I have are just repetitions of the same concept that we already showed in three of these pictures where J Jesus and the apostles or angels are wearing these robes over one shoulder that contain uh, a, a mark. Now, when we talked about marks and clothing, we, we did that in another video in uh, the, the garment of the Holy Priesthood. Um, and, and so I believe that's related to that. But we have to remember that these were done later on after the apostasy of the original Church of Jesus Christ and that these things that we are reading about and seeing in these pictures were done after the, the, the true Church of Jesus Christ had fallen away into apostasy and that the, um, the the Catholics and the Gnostic Christians uh, started altering the original way 
either because they couldn't remember the right way or they just decided to do things differently. And so uh, we did talk about having sacred marks and clothing in the video called uh, the, the, the Garments of the Holy Priesthood. And so uh, if you want to know more about that topic, you can um, see that video that I made. Uh, but as for this video, we are only talking about the robes of the priesthood. And, in, and uh, I believe I have shown sufficiently that uh, there was a concept of having uh, robes in the early Christian church as, as, as part of an, an ordinance. Uh, the pictures show you that it was done on a, a one shoulder which is the way that we do it. Although uh, our, gar our, our robes of the priesthood do not contain marks, I believe that was a later corruption to combine things that we talked about in previous videos. And so that is all I have to, to say to you in this video. But we do see the, the, the concept that Joseph Smith said that there, there were robes as part of um, an ordinance. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.